Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use PC GeoGraph to sample landscape layer data. It'll allow you to auto-populate static meshes on layers. I'll also show you how to detect the edges of layers, which can allow you to create a harsh border between two terrains. It can also let you create a path lined with trees. That is looking pretty satisfying. Just a word of caution before you jump into this tutorial. There is a bug in version 5.2 that's going to be fixed in version 5.3. If your landscape is set to component subsections 2x2, two two, the landscape sampler is going to be a little off from what you need. So this is not going to work for that. You need the component subsections to be one by one, and unfortunately the default open world map is set to two by two, so you will need to create your own landscape. All right, I've got a new map open. I've created my landscape, and its component subsections are set to one by one. I've created three different layers and painted two of them onto the landscape. Let's get started. First off, I'm going to create a PCG graph. I'll call it PCG underscore land Escape layers, and I'll drag that into the world. Now let's open it up and I'll show you what we're looking at. So you can get this data in at least three ways. One of them is to do a surface sampler and plug in landscape into the surface sampler and let's inspect it. And if I scroll over to the right, I see sandstone, dirt, and snow, and the total of these layers is weighted from 0 to 1. And if you look at landscape height, this does not appear, so make sure you're getting the data from landscape. We can also get the data from a get landscape data node, and if we inspect this, then we see the same data sampled, although it will return a few more points than the surface sampler. 16,000 versus 145, so quite a few more points. But in this case, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to create a blueprint, and I will call it BP underscore landscape layers. And if I open it up, I'm going to add a spline component and a PCG component. The PCG graph I'll simply set to this PCG underscore landscape layers, PCG that I just created. And the spline, let me zoom out a little bit, I'm going to expand the spline a fair bit and set it to closed loop. And I'll compile, save, close that, and let's delete this PCG volume from the world and add my blueprint in. And it's a little small now, so let's expand this. All right, back in the PCG graph, I'm going to use a get spline data node. I've set it to self because the spline is on the same actor that holds the PCG volume. And now I'm going to do a spline sampler and set it to distance on interior. And now I'm just going to hook it up to a projection node and project landscape as the target. And just like the surface sampler, using landscape as the target gives me layer information. All right, so now let's add a point filter to do something with the layer information. I'm going to just use sandstone as the target attribute, and you'll just use whatever your layer is named. You will want to check use constant threshold, and you'll see this warning, can't broadcast threshold type to target type. Well, change the type to float instead of double, and that should clear up that error. And I'm just going to set it to 0.5, and now if I add a transform points, this will let me preview the point filter. Debug selected. And there we go. There are my sandstone layers. So let me just add a static mesh spawner for this, and turn off debug. And for the static mesh spawner, I'm going to use 
my good old fallback, SM rock. And let me change this to no collision, just so it spawns faster. And there we go, a bunch of rocks. A few too many rocks. Let's fix this by, for now, just changing the sample space into 500. A few less rocks. We'll clean that up later. All right, so next I'm going to create a follow-up point filter and pipe the outside information into this one. So we've eliminated anything that is sandstone greater than 0.5. This one I'm going to say if snow is greater than 0.5, we'll use it. And let me just copy these transform points and static mesh spawner. And I'm going to set this one to Roman statue. And now we've got Roman statues on the other side. And now let's create this border between the two. So what I've done is, well, let me show you. After this point filter, where I've split off sandstone, I'm going to check is snow greater than zero, which means snow has been painted anywhere at all. And I will hook up the inside filter to this. And if it is greater than zero, I want to make those crazy spikes. And if it's not, I'll just drop it back into this rock spawner. So there you go. You see that this has created a bit of a border. And I, I created this border by taking away from the sandstone, basically. But you could do it on the other side or both sides if you want. All right, so let's grab this, drop in a transform points. And let's make these distinct just to start off with. So for the scale min and max, I've undone these locks so that I can set these values to different values. And I'm going to uncheck uniform scale. So let's make them 0.2 to 0.4 in their x and y width, which is going to make them a little spiky. And then 2 to 4 for their z scale. Rotation, let's do negative 45 to 45, and 0 to 360. And then offset min and max, let's give them a little offset min and max. And I'll go ahead and do this for other nodes at the end, but for now, I'm just giving you some nice spikes to denote the border. OK. So next, let's work on the pathway. And to do that, let me first paint a path straight through the center here. And since this path has taken away from the sandstone layer and the snow layer, we've got nothing here. So now I'll reuse this point filter. Just pipe the outside filter on in. And let's say if dirt is greater than, in this case, I'm going to say greater than 0. And now let's drop a transform points just to preview the node. So if I debug this, I see the points right here. And they're all along the pathway. The reason I didn't just pipe this straight in is as a safety. If I'm working with a lot of layers, then a layer without any of this dirt layer might come through. So it's just a little safer to put the point filter and say, does dirt exist at all? All right, so next I'm going to pipe this into another point filter instead of the transform points. And what I'm going to do is separate out whether or not I want to spawn a tree or I want to spawn some smaller foliage. And for this, I'll say is dirt less than 0.75. And if it is, I'll drop it into a static mesh spawner. And this static mesh spawner is going to be trees. There we go. There are trees at the edge there. And then after this, I'm going to drop it into another point filter and say, is dirt less than constant threshold float 1. And setting it to less than 1 will make it only appear on the border. Let's just use this bush static mesh. There we go, SM bush, nice little thing. And now we've got a few bushes 
a little inset from the trees. And I'm not going to use this last set of points, but if I debug them, you'll see that I've eliminated the very center of the path where it's the strongest. So you could put some other doodads here, some twigs, whatever you want, and leave the bushes and trees on the outside of the path. But I am not going to use this at all. I'm just going to discard this. And now uh, that's pretty much everything. This is the graph that I showed you initially, except that I just need to add some more point transforms. And let's go ahead and do that now. All right, I've got that set up. Let's set up the transforms on this thing. These are the rocks, so I'll just jumble them up a little bit. Negative 50 to 50, negative 20 to 20, and 0 to 360 rotation. And let's jumble up the Roman statues as well. Let's make them rotate 0 to 360, and B size. Let's check this box and size 3 to 5. And let's see, let's do the trees. I find these can move around a lot more. And let's just give them a tiny bit of x, y, or pitch and roll, and then set the yaw from 0 to 360, and make them 0.8 to 1.3. And let's pretty much do the same thing for the bushes. Negative 300, though. They're a little smaller, so I don't want them moving quite as much. And negative 5, negative 5, 5, 5, 0 to 360, and 0 0.8 to 1.3. Okay, so that's getting close, but the spikes need to be a lot denser. So now what I'm going to do is go and add a density noise node. And I'm going to put it right after projection. If you look at projection, and let me uh, turn off all of these static mesh spawners. You can see that all of the points are white. They're all one density. So adding a density noise here will allow me to randomly filter out some of these nodes, some of these points as we go on. And now if I debug this, there we go. We got the noise. OK, so let me add a density filter right in here. This is for the rocks, and I can turn off debug and re-enable these static meshes. And this density filter, I'm going to do make it really aggressive. And let's add a density filter for the Roman statues. And this I'm going to make even more aggressive. And one more density filter, this time for the trees. A little less aggressive on this one. 0.8 works. And let me take a little time to organize this. While we're doing that, let me talk about my philosophy of graph layout. If you look at these point filters, I'm piping the points one direction or another, but they never loop back on themselves. So I'm being really efficient by only touching each point as few times as possible. And that's going to let my graph generate faster and use fewer resources doing so. All right, done with organization. Let's look at the results. <laughs> well, that's uh, not very good. So what I need to do is back under the spline sampler. Let's change this back to 100 sample spacing. And there we go. Now I can go find my blueprint and expand it dramatically. And we've got the thing that I demoed initially. Let's bump this tool strength up to 1 so I can paint some here. There we go. So you've learned how to access landscape layer info and how to detect the borders via just the general property of how landscape layers work. All right. Have fun.